bitches! Hi, hello, welcome. We have decided to try a new recording apparatus and it has worked so great thus far. Yes. Loving every minute of it. <laughs> and it has fun sound effects! <laughs> Yay! Hilarious. Very, very, very little sound effects. But this is like an upload to media, so if I find some, it'd nice. be great. But, anyways. Okay. We are going to be talking about the sun and its shade. Yeah, we are. And we got like or something or another, I don't know. Multiple Nox chapters in a row. It was so nice. Yeah, it was. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Starting on chapter 18, which in the book is part two, the terrible gift of knowing of the book. Chapter 18. I will admit there was a lot going on in these chapters. A lot of faces we haven't seen in so long. Yeah. A lot of... Um, blast from the past, if you will. The very, very, very long past. Yes. So. Absolutely. So, in the last, um, <laughs> sorry, I just read my notes. Um. We know that Knox and the Reavers are looking for these men in Rascot colors, right? In the colors mm -hmm. of the North. So in this chapter, they find them. And I was super confused. I felt like I fucking missed something. And it's yeah. probably something that I read in the last book and just have forgotten because that was so long ago. Um... But I was like, why are, is it Moray, 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 Mari the fucking Queen's men, um, dressed in Rascot the colors. North. I was, yeah, I was yeah. confused. Because we know it's not the North, and everyone's talking about men in the Northern colors, but we know it's not the North because of the curse so obviously it's a ploy. Yeah. But, and you know, at first I was like, what if it's like, not necessarily like a war band, but some type of, maybe it is from people from the North prior to the, like maybe they were like defunct men from the North. Um, that hadn't crossed the border, so they hadn't been affected by the curse. Yeah, kind of like how Feiyu, um, at the university, um, and then I was like, well, what if they're people who, like, came across these items? Like, like, kids who, like, ran away, kind of like the Lost Boys, in a way. Like, yeah. what if they're, like, kids who came across some random items and they're using it to survive what is that like an opportunity is that like a possibility is this something that we could you know explore like how did they come across these items what is this what is that kind of thing yeah because um, we do find out that they are children yeah and, and what the fuck but also like Knox asks a really valid question because our little group's assumption right now is that they're wearing colors of the North to do bad things and make the North look bad. Mm -hmm. And so Knox is like, if, um, first of all, if they wanted, no, wait, 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 wait. If their goal is to be seen, why aren't they raiding villages and sacking towns? Um, if the Queen's, if the queen wants to incite people, shouldn't there be more raping and pillaging? And, like, valid question. Like, like, and then even, I think, um... Because the, um, 
who is it? The the captain of the guard. Yeah. He was known to terrorize women after he got them home. So yeah. that yeah. is a very valid question. Absolutely. And like if you're trying to make them look bad, why wouldn't you be doing terrible things in their name? Like yeah. it doesn't make sense. So it's a valid question. And one that we don't have an answer for yet. Well, mm -hmm. we will by the end of the episode, but we don't yeah. yet. Yeah. Um and even then we don't even have an answer. We still have like Yeah. A mild answer, let's say. Not the full one. Um, but I I like the protectiveness that the boys have over Knox because I mean, when we met the men, well when met when Knox met the men she tried to kill one of them. She was trying mm -hmm. to get information on them. She knew it was a reaver. She thought that this is the man who knows something of a person who stole Amaris away from her. And, like, they they met on terrible terms. But yeah. now they're being super protective. And they're like, are you sure? Like, what if they have unpure intentions with you what if they do this what if they do that and it's like that is very 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 true and a very valid concern they also don't know her gift so like <sighs> yeah and it's that a dramatic way to use it but hey <laughs> she needs souls to stack up <laughs> well and maybe i don't know maybe it's my like maybe it's because of work or because of i don't know but so many books right now, and I get it, it's for the plot, but, like, if people would just fucking communicate <laughs> yeah, and be authentic and real, it would solve so many problems. Because I yeah. still feel that at some point, something's going to blow up. And if it's not Malik, maybe it's going to be Amaris, because Amaris yeah. technically doesn't know what she is yet either. Like, mm -hmm. at some point, it's going to blow up, and there's going to be a big ordeal about her being a succubus. And I'm just... I'm curious, too, because we obviously know what it does to men, but does it do the same, does it do the same thing to women? I feel like it would. Cause, Cause I don't, well, I don't recall because she they... can like feed off of Amaris's love. So without, without yeah, the sexual well, part, but I don't remember if her and Emily ever did anything more than that. More than like because, kissing? Yeah. Cause like, remember Emily had a huge crush on her. They were like, they definitely did, but what, I don't like sex or yeah, I'm pretty sure. See, and I thought they did, but but I think Nox I mean, can control I... it, right? Like, I guess so. I don't know. We don't I know a lot about her gift. We, we just don't. know that it it's she stumbled upon it upon it, and then she used it for her own good. Yes, which thank God for that because it comes in handy at the end of this entire thing but I, so i don't have anything else until page 196 which is right um, towards the end but <laughs> I, go ahead i just so she the easiest way for her to sneak up on these boys in this like ravine type thing that they're in or valley not ravine but like a valley in between two hills is to like walk through this creek which Knox. Is, i mean yeah it is a ravine yeah i think yeah so. not a not a big ravine but but Knox is, like, used to living in civilization and being clean. And she doesn't like water that she can't see the bottom of. Which, fucking fair, first of all. Because, same. I don't like water that I can't see the bottom of either. Um, especially if there's, like, mud and dirt at the bottom. Because then my feet sink into it. And God only knows what kind of creatures live in there. <sighs> so fair. <laughs> However... It's not something in the muck or something in down deep in the water that she can't see. 
that gives her the fuck away. <laughs> As she's walking through this fucking creek, she's looking at the boys and something touches her calf and she yelps. That's not me. I didn't do that. It's Brittany, but I don't understand what she's talking about. So anyway, um, I do know what she's talking about. But anyway, she just <laughs> fucked up my thought. She's walking through the creek, okay? And a fucking turtle brushes her cat. A turtle! <laughs> like, come on! People keep those as pets. <laughs> and she yelps. And the boys are like, What the fuck was that? that? And she's like, fuck. Okay, yeah. well, guess I have to hide my axe now because it's going to look suspicious. <laughs> Yeah, so she si she hides her axe, and then they, one of the boys comes over, and she's, like, getting ready to, like, pretend to be a local maiden, and, like, all these, like, dramatic things, and then all of a sudden, the boy goes, Knox? And it's a card? Is that how we decided we said it? It's Ackard. Ackard. Okay, well, that's stupid, and I probably said the same thing the last time during the first book, but anyway, <laughs> Ackard, and I didn't remember who that was, so I had to do some remembering and looking through my old notes, because I didn't want to Google it, because I didn't want another fucking spoiler, um, and it's Ackard, which was her bully from the orphanage who ended, who ran away. I love it with these uh little little things. Shout out to William for finding this program. <laughs> William. Um, and then that's the end of the chapter. Like she says, "Hi, Ackard," and that's the end of the chapter. And then you're like, "What the fuck just happened?" Excuse me. Also, just to since that's the end of the chapter, I have to bring this in. Um. Apparently, at some point on the podcast, and I don't remember which episode this was, but we were talking about the, um, I do remember what episode it was. It was when we were talking about Ragnarok, and we were talking about, like, the Christian equivalent, and we we said, what happens when Jesus takes the Christians, and that's what Brittany sent me in a text message to me. <laughs> what happens when Jesus takes the Christians? By the way, I have the same background on my phone. Do you really? <laughs> Nice. I was like, that's my background. Did I send that to her? <laughs> I don't think so. I think I just Googled it. But yeah, I did too. <laughs> Ragnarok, when Jesus takes the Christians. I, I still don't remember what that is. What is it? <laughs> Revelations. It's the. Oh, fuck! <laughs> The second coming. <laughs> and not the good kind. Uh, Listen. When Jesus takes the Christians. <laughs> let's see if it Google. Pops. Rapture. The rapture. That's right. <laughs> She's going to die when she hears this because she died the first time. Because I'm pretty sure that that's what I Googled in the first episode, and I was just like, I googled <laughs> when Jesus takes the Christian, or what happens when Jesus takes the Christian. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, you're welcome for that little side note. Um, but I then, guess. chapter 19, I literally said, uh, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. Uh, she starts it off with, it's been nearly a decade since the bully and his friends had broken into the pantry and attempted to drag Knox and Amaris to see the bishop. And I was like, it's been 10 years since that? Hold up, hold up. How old are these bitches? Yeah. <laughs> How old is everyone? How old were they? Like, when all of that happened, I'm not gonna lie, I thought they were like 15, 16. When that yeah, I'm happened. pretty sure they were only like 13. Yeah. I looked it up, and they were like, oh, that happened when she was 13. And I was like, okay. Uh, Amaris got bought. Not bought, but, like, ran away. Um, when 
they were 15, 16, so now I'm like, did that same, like, did they get, like, told to go away at 13, 14? Like, what the fuck? Um, so, whatever. Bully from the childhood comes back. Um, it turns out he's kind of like the leader of this child. Band of misfits. (laughs) Yeah, of the Lost Boys, essentially. Basically. Um, And it's ill-fitting clothes, like, nobody knows, like, you could tell this is, like, a ragtag team of soldiers. Like, no formal training, no nothing. So, she's got to obviously be super uh, chill about, like, asking her questions without raising any awareness of her ultimatum. Or not ultimatum, but, like, her ulterior motives. So, she's like, oh, shit, like, I can't be a worrisome maiden, maiden, like, off to do this. Uh, shit. Um... So, he gets them alone because the other guy's like, what the fuck is going on? Basically, and he's like, she's my childhood friend. I'll handle this. And she's like, what are you doing here? Like, what's going on? Are you, um, she so, asks him, like, are you, um, what does she say? She's like, if you are... Um, working She's for the like, North. Where did you go when you oh, left there it is. Harley? If you and your men are fighting for the North, I will keep your secret. And he's like, no, that's not what's happening. <laughs> well, well, see, we don't even know why they're dressed up yet. Yeah. We don't even know, cause, or like what happened to them. She asked like, what happened when you left? Um, they literally almost went feral, the three of them. There were three bullies. Uh, yeah. He didn't make it past the first year. He got a cut on his leg. It was basically died. Um, they came across a very poor town. Uh, farmer and his wife were like, come work with us. You can stay with us. So, like, basically, he's been with them ever since. Um, now they're dressed in the North colors, and she's like, well, I ran away from my master, and I'm trying to figure out where to go from here. Um, but, like, I was, like, and you said you worked for the farmer, not in the army. What brings you to be part of such of a camp? And he goes, money. You, it makes the world go round, doesn't it? You can never have too much, but you can always have too little. Um, and so that's when we were like, have you defected to Rascot? Yeah. Obviously not, but so we do find out though that all of them are children. Um, and we do not necessarily figure out, but we uh, have found out through all of the context clues that the queen has taken her army to the poorest of the poor um, areas of the kingdom and basically conscripted children in exchange to do this duty. Um, and if once they fulfill this duty, the families will be compensated for. So money is essentially what's driving everybody to do this. But they keep saying the all mother will forgive them. Yeah. And nobody knows why at this point. So, and the thing, the only thing I wrote about this entire chapter was, uh, what the fuck is going on? Because he tells her, I need you to leave Knox and not just this camp. Don't stay here. Go neither north nor south. Go to Tarkany and find a new home in the desert. Or if you must go west, find a ship bound for the Isles. I was no, I was never good to you or your friend, but please accept this as my chance at penance. Goodbye, Knox. And then she just walks away. But, like, what the fuck is going on? Which we're about to find out, but I was so confused. That's literally all I wrote for chapter 19. <laughs> I basically just said that, like, it's not much info, like, concrete info, 
but it's enough to go off of. Um, and and there's something to be said about the queen. The queen is up to something, something evil, something terrible. The queen is fucked. Okay, the queen is. Yeah. Oof, she's almost worse than Amarantha. Oh my god, yes. In fact, she is. <laughs> yeah, she she is. She's worse. Weird percent worse than amarantha amarantha just wanted like the power to do things she just wanted to prove everybody that she could be the most powerful and she wanted the high lord this bitch fucked a little off her rocker like yeah a little more than a little more than a little off her rocker (laughs) yeah (laughs) um and it's like he's giving he's not necessarily trying to give clues but like the way he's like acting it's like Oh no 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 no! We need to follow you. This is this is bad, and it's like okay, he knows something, and I was sitting there like, okay, does he know something about the North? Because he's sitting there telling her to leave, like immediately yeah. leave, and it's like, the fuck is going does on? Does he know about something about the North that we don't? Like, does he did he hear something or like does he know like information from like the soldiers that like the Queen told them? Or does he know, like, the Queen's, like, maybe the Queen's going to march up there. Like, maybe a war is coming, like, right. between the North and the South. Like, why, why is he not, like, or is he just, like, because, like, the North is evil because of what they learned. But now right. he's that the South is evil, but I feel like... Everybody's evil. Learned, Surprise! Yeah, <laughs> I feel like if my, okay, so, like, in terms of childhood... When you grow up and you're, like, so used to hearing one thing, but then you see, like, the opposite of that, I feel like you wouldn't... Like, if I was in Akrid's position, I'd be like, maybe the North's not so bad. <laughs> maybe right. I just don't know. Yeah. Um, but he's over here like, no, go west or go east. Yeah. Go anywhere but north and south (laughs) and i'm like okay we obviously we know the south is fucked but like yeah you just like saw what the south is doing so like don't you think that maybe they're lying about the north too you would think but also we know from the wait maybe maybe is that on this one yeah we know from the last like amaris chapters that the king of the north is a little like woohoo. So true. Maybe There's like no king. Yeah. But... So that was the end of chapter nineteen, right? And now we're into yeah. chapter twenty. And chapter twenty is very short. Basically, Knox comes back, and the Reavers are like, "What the fuck? We they caught you? Are you okay?" Like freaking out. And she's like, I lost my axe. <laughs> <laughs> she's so worried about her axe. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, they're in disbelief that, like, she just walked out of there. Um, and then she tells them that they're children and they don't know what they're going to do, but it's going to take place tomorrow night. Um, and she's like, they're like, and she, they just let you go. And she's like, well... Somebody that I went at the orphanage with, and they're like, okay, what do we do? And then we slip into Knox's dream world, and I still think these dreams are real. I don't, or they're both there, or, like, maybe it's part of her power. She can draw people into, I don't know. Yeah. Like Something the, about these dreams like, is not normal. Well, because she's like, that's a weird thing for you to say about me, and it's like, why would... Why would Knox's imagination of Amara say that about her? Right. I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but also maybe Knox is self-conscious about, like, not self-conscious, but, like, her, she's self-aware oh. of her, um, of her dreams and how weird they are. Yeah. And how this is not normal, so, like, maybe she's making like maybe she is having amara say these things to kind of like jolt her into realization of oh yeah you're right this is weird i don't know all i know is is i think this 
um, war band of children is on a suicide mission. I, okay. I, <laughs> I don't think they realize that, but I think they are. Okay, yeah. So I, when I first, I was like, oh man, like the leaders know it's a suicide mission. Like the leaders know do. it's a suicide mission. Um, and that's, and they're not telling the kids that. Like they're not telling the kids that. And I was like, oh, like, no wonder Ackert is, like, so up in arms about it. And then the next chapter came, and I was like, okay, so... The queen knew. Suic- yeah, and I was like, okay, so maybe not a suicide mission, but definitely something terrible. And then I finished the chapter, and I was like... Yeah. I was like, all right, maybe I'll revert back to that. Like, I, yeah. I was, like, so back and forth with everything. So, but yeah. I literally only wrote two things for this chapter. So, for the first fucking half of chapter 22, no, 21, um, they are hiking in the rain, in a forest, following this, um, like, band of boys. Yeah, the Lost Boys. And the poor Knox is me as fuck. (laughs) Like, she's like... (laughs) It's cold. My feet hurt. I hate this. I'm wet. And I'm like, yes, that would that would be me. And then the the only way they finally get her to stop bitching is Malik, like sweet, gentle Malik, gets in her I'm face and like yells at her. No matter what, turns and give her gives her the father treatment. The yeah, bro, what the fuck is your problem? And, okay, I get it. Rain is annoying for most people. Oh, it's the whole chapter that she's complaining. It's the entirety yeah. of chapter 21. Basically. <laughs> yeah. So, I, okay, I like rain. I don't like being wet. And the problem with being wet is that the clothes rub. Yeah, okay, and I don't, like, I like playing in the rain. When I then have the option to come inside and take a shower and warm up and put on dry, clean clothes. Yes. Or if I have a raincoat, that keeps me dry the entire time. But here's the thing. I, okay, and this is my biggest pet peeve as, like, a bigger girl. When we go to the beach. (laughs) When we go to the beach. um, So, like, we had a friend visit and he wanted to go to the beach we went to the beach, we were in the water, we were playing, we were having fun, everything was great. I, at first, was like, oh, we're gonna go back to the apartment, we're gonna have, you know, each one of us is either gonna take a shower, or dry off, or, like, you know, get into, like, dry clothes, it's gonna be fine. I smoked a little bit, and I opened my big, fat, hungry mouth, and go, hey, are we going to grab dinner while we're down here? Hey, we should we should go to dinner. Hey, we should go to Coconut Joe's. I really want some tacos. And everyone's like, "Yeah, I'm hungry. Let's go to let's go get tacos." And I was like, "Yeah." I got in the car. My swimsuit top started rubbing and I was like, "Oh. Fuck. Okay." I was getting annoyed. I had no t-shirt. Dry t-shirt, let's say. I had no dry t-shirt. And I can't take my top off. If I if I take my top off, like, everybody knows I have no bra on. I have no nothing. I have no tatas. <laughs> I'm a bigger girl. You can't get away with that bullshit. You fucking skinny ass bitches out there who can. Fuck you. Um, so I was like, I need to get a t-shirt or shorts or something because, like, My bottoms were rubbing, and Um, I was getting, like, I was getting really, really over, like, stimulated. We go into this, uh, you know, this touristy shop, and I get two t-shirts, super big t-shirts, go into the bathroom, I put them on, and I'm like, they're not, they're big, but they're not big enough to hide that I'm not wearing a bra, and I was like, So I put my wet ass suit back on and I put a dry ass shirt on and I'm grumpily <laughs> marching out there just pissy and Will's like, I thought you were gonna change your like outfit and I was like, 
everyone's gonna see my tits. I can't do that. <laughs> and he goes, okay. And then I'm just grumpy the entire time. Yeah. And no, you can just tell because I was like, <laughs> pissy. Yes, I can't either. I hate that. So like, like when. Girl, I get it. <laughs> yeah, like when we go to the fucking um, water park that's literally right here in town. We used to live even closer. It's like maybe 15 minutes from our house. Um, doesn't matter. I would take clothes there to change afterwards. I'm not driving home in this bullshit. Not doing it. Chub rub yeah. and wet are just not good. Yeah. So, yes. When we went to the, when we went to the beach the last time, I took like a dress that's a little bigger. So, like, it wouldn't matter yeah and as soon as i put that dress on and we got into the car i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> Wolf's like what are you doing and i was like i'm getting comfy <laughs> he goes your dress is wet and i was like that's fine because that's fucking cotton that's yeah i don't give a shit <laughs> Everything else is not And, like, it's different when it's, like, loose and flowy and wet versus when it's, like, my bra. And it's, like, yeah. fucking pasted to my fucking skin. And it's... <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, Knox, girl, I... I feel you. Get it. I understand. I feel those blisters on your feet, girl. Like, I feel like I, I got them. I feel like Ugh, I... Yes. I, I, I understood. I... Sympathy pains, girl. And you know what? Fuck the men for yeah. pushing at you. Because they, and she even says that. Like, they're like, Reavers do this, this, and this. And she's like, I'm not a Reaver. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hello. Anywho. Now, did she have to bitch every single second and, like. Maybe that's the only thing that was getting her through, okay? <laughs> but. I was like, I get that. That would be fucking annoying. But also. I would do the same thing. I've yeah, been I there. Would. I've done that. I would be too. And then once he yelled at me, I would have immediately burst into tears and then like done the same like grum grumbling under my breath the rest of the way. <laughs> same. I probably wouldn't have cried. I probably would have been like. I cry when I'm mad. So I would have. Same. Because I would have been pissed. I probably would have been like, why did he yell at me? <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely, I would have been pissed because I would have been so uncomfortable. Like the tears would have came later. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been angry i would have been like <laughs> there's a good chance i would have already been crying from the discomfort but that's a whole other thing you know that like grumpy meme from like the meme days where everybody would just like post like that that'd be me but yeah as soon as he yelled at me now if yeah. will will doesn't yell at me i always stop yelling at me <laughs> he's like i'm not yelling at you he just tells me truths that I don't want to hear. Yeah. Um, I do the same thing. I'm like, and then I go, stop yelling. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Um, the only other thing. fucking moved, too. She was always at the Soki. If anything, she was on her fucking back. Fuck you. Right. Right. Like, it's not like she's. She was never on her team. Fuck you, bro. Building endurance or some shit. Like. She's a courtesan. What do you expect? Yeah. Anyways. The only other thing I wrote about this chapter was at the very last sentence. Uh, girl, same. I said, okay, this is not a suicide. This is where I was like, oh, this is... Blah, blah, blah. Um, I said, oh, not. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Malik finds out that they're going to the temple of the all mother and i was like oh this is not a suicide mission but a death sentence for the temple yeah partially true yeah so partially true which side of it is true i guess we'll find out in the next chapter yeah so chapter 22 <laughs> Ma malik and ash i about said mash because malik and ash but malik and ash take off That's running right <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'd have Mashing to be. Mashing it up. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I got, I got, I got, I got this, I got this ready. Oh, hold on. <laughs> no. <laughs> no.
Mashing it up. Oh my gosh. So yeah, they they take off. And then all of a sudden this bitch finds endurance. Yeah, she starts running. Um and she get when she gets there she, they're like already fighting. Um and then there's there's a woman's voice that's like please. And by the way, the whole fucking temple is on fire. Like uh, the tree also, is on fire. Remember, the temple is literally made of marble. Yeah. But Not there's really. a tree in the middle. Yeah. And it's on fire. Um, and on page 221, she's talking to this priestess. And she's, like, trying to save her. And she's like, no, like, don't don't try to save me. And Nox is like, hold on, I'll get you out. And the priestess whispers a single word. And I literally wrote squints, like, in quotations, squints. And then I was like, Yggdrasil? Because that's what she calls the tree. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't remember them calling the tree that before like and they're apples too they're apples yeah and there's an apple on the tree of yggdrasil and I'm that like, the apple of like life the apple, apple of, of like, knowledge that's what the power. that's what the apple is in the bible in the biblical sense is the apple of knowledge and yeah the apple has significant not significant meaning but like there's a lot of different meaning me meanings. Why is that Stop. hard to Stop Is that why they give teachers apples because it was the apple of knowledge? Cause that's really gross if that's the case. And I'm gonna burn everything that anyone's ever given me that's apple shaped that's a teacher gift. I'm gonna have to look into that more. I'll let you know next time. But um, I was just really grossed out by that potential epiphany. Well, you're going to find out that I can't wait till next time. I'm going to find out right now. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, so, she, Nox gets the fucking apple. And Nox is, like, about to fucking kill herself to get this apple. Like, because the temple is marble, as the marble warms up, the temple fucking turns into an oven. Like a wood, you know, like a brick oven. Like, basically. So... It's hot as fuck in there. Is that why? No, apples were seen as a representation of knowledge and wisdom, and by giving one to a teacher, students acknowledge the importance of education in their lives. Okay, but why are they Just... seen as a symbol of that? Uh, okay, continue your thought. Okay, um, so Knox is trying to get the apple, and Ash is, like, yelling for her, um, and she gets the apple, and Ash is like, we gotta get out of here, and she's like, where's Malix, and where's Malik, and Ash is like, I'll find him, go, um, she doesn't listen, because, she, of course she doesn't listen, <laughs> and so she goes, but I wrote, um, on page 224, oh no, someone is about to die, and I stand by that statement, I feel like someone's about to die, um, and not so she finds Malik and he's trying to save a young boy, but the boy is already gone. And I stand by my statement, but not I'm not talking about that young boy. I still feel like one of the three is about to die. But um they get out and they are covered in burns and blisters and all kinds of shit. But when they get out, they basically fall down and like try to stay alive <laughs> and they basically all just kind of pass out right yeah 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 because they're all exhausted and they have smoke in their lungs i basically uh for this entire chapter because there was so much that was said i just was like holy shit there was so much that happened first of all fuck the queen Fuck the queen. Because she because knew she that priestess had those powers. She knew yeah. them boys wasn't going to come back from that. Yeah. Um, she ain't for the all-mother. Because she planned this. Mm-hmm. She is literally a conniving fucking snake. Yep. Um, poor Ackard. Yeah. Like, I know he was a bully as a child. 
But, like, poor all of those boys. Like, fuck. Like, they were, like, I know he was a bully. Everybody was a bully at some point. But, like, money drives the fucking world. And then then I was like, they were so desperate for money. They literally did this for it. And I was like, you know what? Fuck capitalism. (laughs) Honestly, fuck (laughs) capitalism oh <laughs> and that's the end of chapter 22 they is then Perfect. passing out because here is your apple oh god thing of the day the apple is a symbol of knowledge wisdom and education and it dates back to ancient greek mythology in the story of hades and persephone persephone ate a pomegranate seed given to her by hades which forced her to return to the underworld and send spend part of her Part of each year there, in another famous tale, the goddess of wisdom, Athena, gave an apple to Paris, which he awarded to... Av- I don't have any idea why the pomegranate was fucking involved. That has nothing to do with the apple, but okay. Um, which he awarded to Aphrodite. As a result, Aphrodite granted Paris the love of the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen, who became the cause of the Trojan War. These tales associate the apple with knowledge, wisdom, and education. Um, the apple has been around for a long time. The term apple itself has been around since the 1500s. Um, in Greek mythology, it was the fruit of the tree of life. In Norse mythology, Idun was the goddess of youth and kept a basket of apples that she distributed to keep the gods eternally young. Uh, the apple is heavily referenced in the Bible's book of Genesis. Um, a myth claims it was the forbidden fruit in Eden. To ancient Romans, apples were connected with love and marriage rituals. It is said that striking a woman with an apple would make her fall in love with you. That's fucked up. Don't do that. And Uh, also, it sounds like I was fucking right. (laughs) Yeah. It Uh, sounds like I was right. The Christians stole that tale from more ancient mythology, like their entire book. Yeah. Apples is one of the oldest crops used for food in human history. Many people think the apple was first grown in China or Egypt, but in fact it was grown in Asia long before those countries got to prominence. Um, The ancients believed that eating an apple would ward off hunger, and its fruit had been used as medicine for centuries. All right. It does go back to when Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden after eating from the forbidden tree. God told them blah, 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 blah. This tree was called the tree of life or the tree of wisdom or the tree of knowledge. The first two names are prefer probably references to healing while knowledge seems related more to wisdom than scientific knowledge. But the majority of them all kind of come back with knowledge and all of that uh, in some way, shape or form. They're, they they do come back to Adam and Eve. Gross. But, Hate they, also that. Talk, but they also say in a lot of mythology apples are revered this is true and like we've covered yeah a lot of christian mythology is taken from ancient mythology so don't throw away your apple things yet i suppose anyway chapter 23 is the last chapter for this episode um and i didn't write too much but there are some badass quotes in this this chapter um for example on page 228, at the close to the top, um, talking about her scars and stuff, she, there's a quote that says, You can be both broken and rebuilt. You can endure trauma and in the midst of pain, discover strength. Your wounds have not defined you. It is you who have recreated yourself despite them. And that was a really good quote. And then... There's another really good quote on page 229, um, and it says, and this is Knox talking about how she can't hate the army or the Lost Boys, basically, because of what they did, because judgment was an armchair luxury for those who have never known suffering, and ain't that the fucking truth. Yeah. And it's, and it's so it's so funny to think about it because it's like, um, I'll like for example, there was our district leader for the uh, store had come by, um, and he was telling all of the managers to do all of these things, and he was upset with the person who took over my position in my department, 
um, that there were things that were not done and she was not handed an easy task um, at a time where there's no hours and nobody working. So the fact that she has not necessarily thrived, but like done a decent job with what was given to her applauds, like applause to her. But he yelled at her for the fact that there were deceased fish in several tanks, six of them. We have, we have 98 tanks. Right. You have a whole wall of fucking tanks. Yeah. And he found six in a giant ass tank of feeders. I feel like that could happen. Like you could do, get all the dead fish out and walk away. And then there could be six dead fish. Yeah. And that's the problem with having that many feeders in that small space because it, it's just not an ideal situation for them. And she was telling me about that and she goes, six? Only six? Wow. That must have been so hard and such hard work for you, a corporate person, to pull out six dead fish. He hasn't been a store leader in like 15, 20 years. And I'm sitting here like, None of these people at corporate, there's like one person in the entire corporate realm who has ever been at the store level. Like the ones who like make major decisions. And I'm sitting here like, are you fucking serious? Like they, Mm -hmm. just like this quote, they have no idea what stores are going through. Or what it's even like. Like, yeah, like they're making their money. They don't give a shit. They're whatever. We're a multi-billion dollar corporation capitalism like yeah and it's like yeah you you wouldn't know that because you're not here like you're not here physically dealing with this stress every day and you wonder why a lot of these store leaders are either quitting or failing or not doing well (laughs) yep mentally (laughs) Yeah, it's and wild. the fact that, like, the corporate world is like, well, if you, you need to make sure your store works. So, like, if you have to come in on your days off or you have to do da da like, you're not getting, like, they're salaried. They're the only salaried people in the entire, like, store. So they no. can come in whenever. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's terrible. No. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, I... So, you know, there's that TikTok that goes around that people stitch and it's like, what's a scam that nobody realizes is a scam? Salaried positions. <laughs> salaried positions. Yeah. If I can never work a salaried position again, that would be great. I work hourly right now in a management level position. I work hourly and I get paid for the work that I do. If I'm yeah. there till seven o'clock, what, now I have to get approval to have overtime. Otherwise, I have to flex my hours and not get overtime. But, like, they don't expect me to work 50 hours for 40 hours of pay. No. Yeah. Like, Will, he's salary. Yeah. We salary is the... Be- oh! There's a big old spider. Don't kill it. <sighs> be nice to it. Keep going up the wall. I'll tell my story while you get a Tupperware dish to go. A Tupperware? I'll get a cup or something. Okay. I don't give a fuck. Okay, tell your story. Basically, Will is salaried too, so he essentially goes... We leave at the same time. He's technically supposed to be at work at by 9. They have an 8.30 meeting that they all have to attend. But they don't really get paid until... <laughs> That worked in your favor, I see. Did you just fucking kill it? No, it fell. Is so it now it's alive? lost. Well. But I will find it later and get rid of it, Brittany, so don't freak out. Oh, there's Brittany a lot now like spiders? She hates spiders. And well, she Brittany, would be... you're about to see the yellow orb weaver. They're everywhere around here. Shut the there's fuck up. Thing. Oh, this doesn't record. This doesn't play until after we get, get till after we're there. <laughs> yeah, they're like this big, literally. 
Shut um, up! Do you want me to come? I don't like spiders either. You'll see them. They're that big. It's not like you're gonna like walk straight into them and be like, oh my god, spider. Like you're gonna see them. Like they're they're not toxic either. Okay. They're just scary looking. But okay, so he said Anyway, side quest. Hours are basically In nine a to side five. Quest. <laughs> yeah. Hours are basically nine to five. They um have an hour lunch. They don't work a full forty hours. But they have a meeting every morning at 8.30 that they have to attend. But they don't get paid until 8, 9. Oh, Will no. used to go in at like 7.30, 8 a.m. No. Will got there at like 8.15 today. He's still at work. It's almost 8 p.m. No. He didn't get home until 8.30 last night. And so this, is, this also happens in your public schools. Okay, we're going to go on like a epic side quest right quick because this also happens in your public schools when you hear teachers complaining they are paid for a hundred and a hundred and sixty or 180 days they are only paid for 180 days at like 6.7 hours a day work still at work yeah and let me let me ask you a question if you had to teach from the moment you got to work at 8 a.m until you left at what four basically and you had maybe a 15 minute window in there where you didn't have kids mind you when i was teaching i had this is this is an extreme case i had some kids with severe disabilities i didn't have a prep period i did not have a uh, um lunch without kids oh, i had no. kids constantly kids with severe disabilities that needed constant attention because i would i would come down there yes and sit with you yes <laughs> because i so it didn't matter what i did that's an extreme case but even for a general education teacher they get one the most most of them get one 45 minute to an hour prep period and that may not be one big chunk that might be broken up across the day Especially for elementary kids, because it's usually like recess, specials, and lunch. They get like little bits of time. Bus duty. Um, bus, yeah, they have bus duty too. And then gen ed teachers also usually get a lunch, but it's not an hour lunch like most corporate jobs. It's like a 25-minute lunch while their kids are eating. And you expect them to prep and plan for full engaging lessons and not only that but if they have any children with special needs in their class they have to individualize those lessons for those children and then you also expect them to grade do monitoring collect data report on that data attend meetings like all these different things you expect them to do and they only get paid for 6.7 hours a day 180 days out of the year and a lot of people, especially in Indiana, in like my county where I used to live, bitched about how teachers were like, oh, well, you get the summer off. And you Fuck that. No, I didn't. Summer. How, yeah. how, you can ask Brittany how many weeks, at least three every summer, I would go in three weeks early and start setting up my classroom and start making copies and start making locker labels and desk labels and chair labels and um, bucket labels and all the things. And that's not like just decorating my classroom. I would spend extra time decorating my classroom. Yes, that is an extra. But if I didn't, your kids would be coming into a classroom with cinder block walls and that's it. Mm -hmm. Literally yeah. all of the cutesy shit in that classroom is either created or purchased by a teacher. We didn't have a budget for that bullshit. Anything that yeah. I bought for my classroom, I bought with my own money. Yeah. And it's so funny because people can continue to complain about how like teachers get the whole summer off and they get paid for it and they do No they play. don't. Okay. So yeah, they get paid throughout the summer to have some time off. But but that money is the money from their the 180, 180 days, days split up over the whole year. 
Yeah, so like you can have the 180 days of one huge lump sum and not get paid for the summer. Or you can get paid. Well, in like the last school district I was at, paychecks. that wasn't an option. We had to do the year round. We, we didn't have the choice. Oh. We had to do the year round. And not even that, forgetting all of that, forgetting all of that. Because I know like lawyers work more than their 40 hours a week too. Okay. Barring all okay, of that. But also the lawyer that we use for like my job now, $450 an hour. I okay, work that's what I'm saying. Weeks for four hundred and fifty dollars. That's an hour. what I'm saying. Similarly educated professionals. So, for example, engineers. They make typically anywhere from sixty thousand to sixty thousand to two hundred thousand dollars a year, and that's just with your like basic master's level education. So bachelor's and master's, which is what I have. I was making $46,000 a year mm -hmm. and I was one of the higher paid teachers in the area or in the state. Yeah. What the actual fuck. Yeah. And not only that, but engineers are building all of this new bullshit and all of these new things that yes, they're great. Yes. We're going to benefit from them. Are they going to give us cancer and probably kill us eventually? Probably. But when teachers, Teachers are just taking care of your children. They're teaching your children how to be decent human beings. They're teaching your children how to read, how to write, how to become an engineer one day. So what do we put more value on? Education. <laughs> yeah. What, what do we put more value on here? Not our kids. So our kids. fuck all of you. And Not I swear the baby. moment that you arm the fucking teachers with guns is the moment that even more school shootings are going to happen because you want to know what one of the top uh, professions with mental illnesses are. You want to know? Do you really want to know? You want to know? You want to know? Fucking teachers <laughs> because of all of the high stress bullshit and the borrowed trauma that they have from your kids because your kids have trauma too. It's, anyway, I'm going to jump back onto the main quest and stop going down that, that side quest because I could talk about that for hours. My small little comment from that giant side quest is one child that I worked with literally derailed my entire career in my entire, uh, like, so I have a master's in a degree and in a field that I don't even want to be in anymore because of never again. I'm because still technically in education, but not in the same kind of education. And I literally sing a song now when somebody asks me why I left education, as I point to my scars, da, 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 da. <laughs> and those are all from one fucking child. So fuck you guys. That was a trauma dump. Yeah, it was. I feel very strongly about it. And it's, Do you feel better, though, is the question. I, I mean, kind of. I feel better for now. Okay. Um, um, chapter 23. Chapter 23. I hope that, um, so Ash is the first out of all three of them to get up, probably because of his training that he does. And, he's and his, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's regaining the ability to, like, you know... <laughs> live function <laughs> yeah compared to everybody so he gets up and he goes to search for survivors after he checks on uh his companions to make sure that they're alive in some capacity no survivors he finds out but he's also burning every single flag color blue anything like that um go fucking ash. and i'm like i hope this fucks you over so fucking much I hope your little plan is so derailed that it's back to square fucking one. Who are you going to conscript now? You took all the poorest of the poor. Yeah. What you going to do now, bitch? I don't have yeah. anything to 243. Um, I was really confused. She was like, I know a safe place or I know a place we can be safe about a day's trek from here. Um, we just have to make it to Hanares. Hanares. Hanares, I think. Hanares. Um, and I was like, the fuck? Because I completely forgot about this dude. Um, but if you remember from the first book, she like took control 
of the Duke of Hanari or Hanari. Um, oh, Millicent, Millicent wanted yeah. that connection. Yeah, to like control everybody, but then <laughs> Knox is like, "No, nah, I'm gonna yeah. use it. Thanks." Yeah. So they go get her, or they send a messenger to him, and he sends like a fucking battalion of fucking coaches to get her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does with like tonics, medicinal properties, everything. Yeah, anything any one of them could ever want to survive. And so I wrote. It's all about that net, net, net work. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Honestly. Um, well, it, okay, so on 243, um, she's pissed. Like, she is pissed off about everything. And she, she just left Ash's room. She's talking to Ash um, about things, and she's he asks her like a personal question not about anything of today's events about the duke nothing like that it was specifically about amaris and essentially she tells him that she loves her not necessarily in love but loves her um and she starts crying and she gets really upset and she goes i'm so sorry i gotta leave so then she leaves to go check on malik um, and in there, he's like, um, this isn't really a friend, is he? Because he's human? Is he a, is he a friend because he's human? And, like, you yeah. can tell the cogs are working, like, he's asking. And she, not, not, not that she's debating on telling him, but, like, she knows as a reaver he's studied all of these things. Like, he knows all of these various creatures that are out there. Yeah. She's like, I don't know if the term succubus has made it as far south. I don't know if he even knows what that term is. But I don't know if I'm ready to say that to him yet. So she goes, would you believe me if I told you that his enchantment was not because he was human, but because he was wicked? And I was like, I like that. I like yeah. that. I like where this is going. So then... Um, she explains to Malik, do you know I've met more, uh, more humans than I've ever have Fae? Perhaps, uh, in, uh, one in 99 is non-human. I've been fairly exposed to mankind, to say the least. None of them act the way the Duke does now. None of them fawn, fuss, or obey with a sort of compulsion. It is not his humanity that has demanded obedience of him. It is what he had chosen to do with that humanity and how he, that, that choice brought him to me. And Malik a obviously asks her what happened. Um, he goes, he took. He felt entitled to that which did not belong to him. From his people, from his kingdom, from his friends, from his family, from women. And his final act of taking was when he met me. And then Malik goes, or like, leans into her and she goes, you did not take Malik. You, you, you give. Because she's learning that not all men are terrible. She's learning that... Some men are terrible. She's learning that some men are good. And it, the boys, she, or the, the boys, the men she's with are good. And the ones that she's, you know, cursed, essentially, are bad. So when she said that to him, he goes, you sound like an avenging angel. And I'm like, I like that. Like the avenging angel, like a good succubus. Because anytime you hear succubus, you're thinking like, that's a demon, stay far away, or, like, an incubus, whatever the case may be, but it's, like, if you have, like, enough in the brain to understand your choices and what you're doing and why you're doing it, kind of like Nox is, yeah, I'm okay with saying she's an avenging angel. I'm also yeah. okay with saying she's a good succubus, and yeah. I like where that's going. I do, too, and I like the way that that conversation went. Because this is why I said maybe it's not Malik that gets mad at her. Maybe it's Amaris who, when she finds out, it blows up. Because it kind of seems like maybe Malik has an idea. Yeah. Like, he definitely understands that she's controlling people. Um, I don't know if he understands that she's a succubus or how she's controlling them, but he definitely she understands. Hasn't. Well, and she hasn't really done anything wrong. 
to them. Like, no. yeah, she tried to kill Ash at first or tried to do something to Ash at first, but, yeah. like, all to get to Amaris. Yeah. So, like... It wasn't and in her just mind, she wanted to. Ash had kidnapped Amaris. Like, or Ash's yeah. people had kidnapped Amaris. Yeah. So it's not like he was, he was not innocent in her mind. He was one of the evil men who takes people. Yeah. And it's not like she, I don't know, it's, they have the same, out. like, they have the same goal. But at first, yeah. they didn't realize that. And I think, because he sees the good in people, he wants to see the good in people, um, I think, he believes she's good even despite what's happening. Now, Amaris I believe is going to have a harder time I think so too. I think so too. Especially because like I feel like there's going to be that whole am I not enough? Can you live without, with just feeding on me? Are you going to have to feed on others? Like, that would be my first question. Oh, so like, you're never going to be able to be faithful to me. You're going to have yeah. to go to others as well. like. But we also don't know that. I mean, We don't know that. There might be a way. Uh, and with what happens on the next fucking page, anything could fucking happen. Because this bitch, <laughs> on the last page of the chapter, page 244, um, she calls the servant that had been helping her. And she's like... I need you to be make, make sure that I'm left in absolute privacy for the night, no matter who calls on me. And she's, like, very specific. No Reaver, no Duke, no one is allowed to come through this door until the morning. Then she digs through her drawer to find what she hid there. She pulls out the fucking apple. And she bites into it. And she bites it! And that's the end of the chapter. That's why I said it, li- it ends on a fucking cliffhanger. And then, really you know, my next, like, my my instant instinct is always to look to the next page, and it's an Amaris chapter. So I was like, son of a bitch! I know. I I saw Gadriel on the next page, and I was like, son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know. I was like, you know, she's about to become a badass. I was like, she's not going to be a badass like Eve because, like, she decided to, <laughs> to sin and not listen to God. <laughs> I was like, I would like to say she's going to be a Lilith, but Lilith didn't eat the apple. <laughs> yeah. But she's going to do something like that. It's going to be good. <laughs> yeah. So I actually am very excited to read again for the podcast, and I have not felt that way in a while with this book. This yeah. book has taken a while to... I know. I put the book down last night, and I had, like, a smile on my face, and Will's was like, is it finally getting good? And I was like... Yes! Yeah. It's finally getting to the point where I don't, like, hate myself. <laughs> and it's, like, right now, I don't know what's going to happen when she bites that apple. Like, so far, I've been like, oh, this is about to happen. Oh, this is about to happen. It's been fairly predictable. But, like, yeah. I have no idea what's about to fucking happen. She could fucking die for all we know. Right! Like, she has no idea what this apple's gonna do! Because technically in, like, mythology, Christian mythology, let's be real, succubus is, like, hell. Yeah! They're demons! Yeah, and if the apple is, you know, good, or heaven-sent, yeah, what if that fucking kills her? Right? We have no idea. So. Alright, well, until next time. Bye.